first and foremost, when did you decide uh, that you wanted to run for the state Senate seat? And, uh, and uh, why did you feel that was the, the right thing to do? Thank you. So yes, I decided to run for the state Senate seat um, in 2019, at the, at the end of 2019. And uh, I had to really think about where um, my skill set, my experience um, could be best, you know, used and could serve the constituents of this district. For the last four years, I have been the state representative in this state assembly, and I knew that this seat was opening up, um, and it was important to really think about what the needs are of the district. And I certainly feel, and um, I felt then, and I feel now, that one of the, the strongest characteristics or one of the things that our state um, and constituents also need is, is that ability to understand how the state legislature works, that ability um, to understand a process, to have some experience. And uh, I knew that if I ran for the state uh, Senate seat, that that was something that I could bring um, that uniquely positioned me uh, for that particular role. It is double the size of the state assembly. So the state assembly represents nearly half a million people. The state Senate seat represents uh, nearly a million people. It's all of Santa Barbara County and about 60% of Ventura County. Uh, and knowing the issues, the policy issues that come up, but also being there during some of our most difficult challenges like the Thomas fire and the debris flow, uh, the closing of the you know, 101 freeway that impacted so many workers for 13 days and now COVID. Um, I think that all of those things uh, position me in a unique way uh, to be able to continue to work on behalf of the constituents of the Central Coast. So you kind of alluded to it there, but what do you feel uh, are your best, your, your biggest strengths, and uh, why uh, do that, does that make you uh, the best candidate out there? Yeah, well, I spent 14 years working in higher education, so uh, I, I often describe myself as an accidental politician. I didn't mean to come into this particular world, but it was, it was the, the work that I did with students and with families that really introduced me to the need um, beyond just thinking about the four walls of a classroom, right? The need that so many of our students and families have as it relates to health, uh, job, environment, uh, you name it, a variety of policies that impact the lives of people on our Central Coast. And so um, I think that that experience uh, com, you know, having worked with students and families directly in our district, combined with the legislative experience um, that I've had, I think uniquely positioned me uh, to be in the strongest position to be able to help our constituents in our district. Um, it, it is, you know, we are one of 120 legislators when we get elected to these roles. And so it's understanding how we're able to move some policy forward, um, how we're able to also help our constituents. Sometimes people forget that uh, it's not just voting on bills or creating bills that are, you know, that that is part of our job. Our job also uh, requires that we work with uh, state agencies in, in terms of helping our constituents every single day. Uh, and so I think that there's a lot there that I can bring to the table and that are the strengths um, of what we can also do for our Senate District 19. Uh, in your mind, uh, why is that experience uh, kind of in this realm uh, of government uh, so crucial? Uh, there are people out there that make the argument that uh, when they're not satisfied with what they're seeing, sometimes an outsider or someone, uh, you know, without that experience almost may have an advantage uh, compared to someone who's had sort of that experience. Why do you feel like that experience is benef a beneficial thing and, and important, makes you the better candidate? Well, I think it's important to recognize that there is not one elected official that will be able to please every single one of the constituents. The issues that are in front of us are, are absolutely very difficult. And when you represent half a million and almost a million, and the seat you're running for represents almost a million, um, I think it's really understood that uh, there are going to be bills that pass, bills that go through the process, issues and positions you take that not everyone agrees with. But at the end of the day, I think that um, over the last four years, uh, it really has been about the values that are important to our district, ensuring that we are protecting our environment, ensuring um, that we are doing all we can during a natural disaster um, that hits our community, ensuring that we are responsive. Um, and so while some may say, hey, 
look, an outsider would be wonderful. I respect that position, but I also feel that in terms of effectiveness, um, in terms of being able to understand um, how to bring resources to our community, that experience is um, absolutely needed. Um, and, and particularly in this moment in time, this is a unique year. Um, we have had to deal with COVID and it's been extremely challenging. Um, and we will have to deal with COVID also in 2021. Um, so being able to bring that to the district, but also having a track record, um, having a track record of having worked on behalf of my district. I think that while there are many candidates um, who talk about some of the issues, you know, we've had some experience with the issues. I'm proud that the bills that I have authored in the legislature um, have, you know, mostly had bipartisan support. So if you look at the bills that I've authored that have been signed by the governor, 95% of those bills have been supported by, in a bipartisan way. So both Democrats and Republicans. It also means that the values and the ideas that I'm bringing forward are widely accepted um, or understood or believed to be part of a solution um, for our state. And I think that that's an important thing to recognize. Well, you kind of, you mentioned it and we all know uh, it is a unique year um, and there's several issues that everyone's dealing with, uh, but specifically in this district, if you could point to one, what is the most uh, pressing issue or the biggest issue that uh, the district, the people in the district are facing right now? Right now, this very second, I believe it's the impact of COVID. Um, whether you're impacted because your job has been impacted and you're trying to get unemployment, whether you're a small business um, that's been impacted, or whether you're a parent or a student in our district that is trying to navigate the educational system that looks absolutely different, um, there are so many impacts of COVID. Um, I think we have to remember that first and foremost, it's the root cause is a pandemic. It's a health pandemic. Um, and then there's all these other layers that come because of the health pandemic. Um, we have seen some incredible challenges, not just at the state level, but at the county and city level as well. And you combine that with ongoing issues that have been issues for our community um, you know, for some time now. And you look at climate change, you look at homelessness, you look at housing, you look at access and quality of healthcare. Um, all of those issues continue to be um, an issues, but they're compounded by what's happening with COVID. And so we continue to, to work on those in the state legislature and um, we do what we can. We do what we can within the resources we have. Um, we have a $54 billion deficit at the state of California. We went into 2020 um, with a $21 billion surplus um, you know, in our rainy day funds. Uh, and that just goes to show how quickly uh, a health pandemic can change uh, the economy and, and what that does and how that impacts folks um, along the Central Coast. And so that will be something that 2020 we will continue to work on. Um, and certainly going into 2021, 2022, we'll continue to work on those. I want to say that some of these issues um, aren't issues that were created right over the uh, year or two or four years in time. They've been historical issues that we've dealt with over the last decades. Um, that require us to keep working on them. And, um, and I think that that's important to recognize. Absolutely, when it comes to uh, addressing that, uh, if you were elected, what, what, were some, what are some of the things specifically you would look into doing to try to uh, lighten the effects of the pandemic and how it's exacerbating some of the issues that we've already been seeing? What are some of the things you would look to uh, do to address that? Some of the things that I've currently been doing as a state assembly member, um, you know, include making sure that we're having conversations with our counties and our cities, um, you know, checking in um, to understand uh, what laws, what flexibilities we have in place. Um, we've certainly had uh, 11 town halls where we've brought information to our district, hosted 11 town halls. And I think that that's been critical, whether it's about insurance or small business or unemployment or education, we have been able to bring experts to the district and opened it up to our constituents um, to make sure they're asking questions um, and they're getting the information they need so that they can make the best decisions. Um, we work very closely with elected officials, um, with other um, leaders in all of these spaces to understand um, what the needs are and then try to figure out how to address those. Um, I've been working with uh, a governor's task force on some of these issues um, where communities are bringing up um, how we can best address, for example, the health guidelines. Um, what changes that those health guidelines could possibly see in order to see more flexibility while still prioritizing the health 
of our community. Um, when it comes to working with our medical community, um, I've been able to work closely with them to understand the financial challenges that they're facing because of COVID, but also to address the simple needs of you know, making sure we have enough PPE for them, uh, making sure that the workers there um, have the ability uh, to be able to do their job um, during this challenging time. Uh, all of those things are part of a bigger equation um, that we've been doing, and I certainly see that as I have um, evidence that I've been able to do for our district, I will continue to do um, in 2021 uh, to ensure that our district and uh, is in a position to, to best uh, kind of make it through some of these really challenging times. I think that many elected officials in, in very different stages, past, present, um, can tell you that this is among the hardest and most difficult challenges that we've seen in our community. Uh, I lived through the Thomas fire and the debris flow, and that was very difficult, but I can tell you that the level and the length um, and, and the complexity of this health pandemic um, it is very, very difficult and is, um, it has global implications, which is another challenge. It's not just Ventura, Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo counties. Um, the implications are global and, and um, it makes it much more difficult. And uh, for you personally, seeing all of that play out, what has the pandemic uh, or the last few months, the response to it taught you uh, or made you realize that uh, maybe you never thought about before seeing all this play out? I think one of the realities um, that the pandemic has, uh, has really kind of presented to so many of us is how quickly um, some, uh, an economic uh, situation can change for a whole country, a whole, you know, a whole world, a whole state, a whole county, um, you know, overnight with a health pandemic. We are reminded how important health is to all other policy areas. Uh, we see the intersection between health and housing, health and homelessness, health and education, health and jobs. Um, these are issues that are connected. We can't always deal with these policy issues in isolation. They ha they're connected to others um, that really impact our community. Um, I thought going into uh, this pandemic with the financial situation that California was in, knowing we had a healthy rainy day fund, um, that we would be able uh, to, you know, sh to do better than, than you know, other states. And certainly that has been the case. I can tell you that other states are hurting much more um, than our state of California is. But however, being the fifth largest economy, um, it has had a you know, severe impact on all of us um, in the state. But without people being healthy, um, without really prioritizing how we help our community um, on the health front and to ensure that they don't get sick and that that, you know, that sickness doesn't make that doesn't doesn't end up in a hospital visit um, or a hospital stay even you know even harder in, in kind of lifetime complications um, is something that I think that is really important uh, and has been difficult to do so I think that that's those are some of my takeaways um, in this particular moment you you talked about all the things that you're trying to do right now and that you're working out to help us through the pandemic uh, as an assembly member uh, is there something being done locally in response to the pandemic that you would look to change if you could? I think in terms of uh, being done locally that I would look to change, that's a good question. Or not. I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I've, I've worked well with county public health, with, um, with uh, you know, our education system um, and, and so forth. And I think that, uh, some of the things that I would look to change, we're working on changing them now. Um, I don't know that I would wait a, a year or so. I think that in those conversations, um, how we think about reopening, um, we've had a lot of you know moments where, of course, we can reflect and say, "Gosh, you know, it would have you know been helpful to do this." I think one of the key pieces, though, um, that I feel has been most effective is kind of coordinating with counties and cities and our state um, in terms of the messaging and education that has gone out. Um, and I know that one of the things that has caused uh, some concern, for example, is the changes in health policies that change, you know, or ambiguity at some times, um, that change a little bit or that aren't super clear. Um, and I feel like we've been working really hard as part of, um, you know, a legislative governor's uh, group that meets on a regular basis. Uh, we've been able to articulate that to uh, the governor's office um, about how having stable, um, consistent, 
clear uh, health guidelines um, it really helps all of us. Um, it helps not just in the delivery of what those are, but the implementation, which I think is really important. Stepping aside from the pandemic, which has been, uh, you know, uh, for good reason, a, a very important conversation and a long conversation that we're going to continue to keep having. But uh, looking back now, even pre-pandemic, um, uh, to uh, uh, Hannah Beth Jackson's tenure in this seat, um, is there you know, what is your takeaway from her uh, two terms? Uh, and is there, you know, what are the things you'd like to continue that she's done? And what are some things that perhaps you'd like to change or uh, do a bit differently? Yeah, well, Hannah Beth Jackson has had quite the legislative tenure, um, it, you know, in California. She is recognized worldwide. Uh, you know, last week alone, the New York Times talked about her legislation as being um, really legislation that sets the way um, on a national level, on family leave, on women on corporate boards, um, you know, and the work she's done uh, to, to help uh, women in the workplace and outside of the workplace and advancement, I think, has been really notable nationwide. Um, she has set some of the policies at the state level um, that other states have followed, and I think it's really important to recognize um, that's not all she's done. Um, but I think that that's where she gets a lot of, um, you know, the national attention, but she's been also a champion for the environment um, and has passed, uh, you know, laws um, that are put in place, uh, really a way that we can continue to sustain um, our environment, particularly in the Central Coast, um, as well as worked on a lot of privacy issues as it relates to technology. Uh, so I think she's definitely uh, been an incredible um, leader for our district and um, for our state. And uh, while we share, you know, similar values uh, in terms of protecting our environment, making sure that women um, have the opportunity to advance and have equal pay for equal opportunity, um, ensuring that women can go back uh, into the workplace um, and uh, have great opportunities. We also, uh, you know, um, are two different in, in, individuals. Um, but share same values. I think that part of being in this role is understanding what the values are of the district. Um, a, a representative in the state Senate is really a liaison to the district. It doesn't mean that every person will agree with you, but knowing what the takeaways are. Our community wants um, a place where we have clean air, clean water, right? A community wants a place where we can have access to health care. Um, even in the Central Coast, we're not LA, we don't have as many hospitals or medical centers as other communities do, but we want that. We want a place where we can find um, job opportunities here um, that relate to the district. So whether um, you know, there are small businesses uh, to be able to support our small businesses, we have an incredible tourism district, we have you know, um, a very critical agriculture district. Uh, those are some of the things that I think our community uh, continues to want to see. And so will I share some of the values that are specific to our district? Absolutely. Um, I guess just broadly, uh, when voters uh, you know, see your name or they hear your name, uh, when they think about you as a candidate, what, is, uh, what, what do you want their takeaway to be? Uh, what do you want people to think uh, when they hear your name? Just kind of the first thing that... Uh, you want to be known for uh, in the community? Well, I would hope that when uh, members of our community uh, see my name on the ballot, they will reflect um, not only on my experience um, working in the legislature, but on what we've been able to do for the district. Um, that they will think of the fact that um, when we had the Thomas fire, um, we worked really hard to ensure that our fire um, safety personnel had the ability uh, to do pre-positioning, which we hear so much about now, right? Being able to get ready for uh, weather and uh, conditions that uh, perhaps could prompt a, a wildfire. I hope that the community thinks about the fact that we fought hard um, to backfill some of the counties, um, you know, uh, cough, some of the counties, I, I think, budget um, shortfalls during these natural disasters to help the counties uh, keep going. I hope that the community will also think about the fact that, look, at the end of the day, um, we, you know, I've had to make uh, difficult choices and we don't all agree, but um, there's a reason and there's a thought process um, and there's consideration uh, for how I get to those particular uh, end votes. So I, I hope that the community will think all of that. I'm someone who was born and raised in this community. So not only am I proud to represent the very community that invested in my own personal success, but I'm also accountable. 
um, this is my home. Um, it's been my home and um, I will continue to do uh, what I believe and what I think I hear from constituents um, is the right direction to go. So uh, we talked about the pandemic and uh, your response to um, your experience, your responses to the, uh, the natural disasters we've seen and um, some of the values that you believe the community has uh, most. Well, what are a couple of, of topics that you're you know, passionate about or uh, would obviously think are important to address that we haven't uh, brought up yet? What are a couple of things that you, you want to uh, you know, mention to voters as something that you're, you're prioritizing heading into uh, this, this term if you were elected? Well, I will continue to prioritize um, emergency response, natural disaster response, COVID response. There's no doubt about it. But in addition to doing work um, in relation to that um, and moving forward environmental and women's uh, issues, I think the other thing that our community should know is that, um, you know, I've been very focused on, for example, consumer protections. Um, I, have, I have yet to find anyone in our community um, that uh, has a disagreement on um, you know the feeling that we should all be treated fairly um, in, in terms of consumer protections and financial institutions. I passed uh, two laws that the governor one the go, one the governor just signed um, last week, um, but the other was passed last year that are one you know that are really uh, leading laws uh, in the state of California, um, but also in the nation. California last week governor um, signed a bill that I authored. Uh, to establish the first consumer protection agency um, in the state of California uh, with oversight of financial institutions. Uh, and I think that that's something that's really meaningful. Um, it has, you know, uh, gotten some notable credit uh, and, and no, it's, it's noticed um, across uh, our country, but it helps a lot of folks. During the pandemic, we've seen a 40% increase in consumer complaints um, in terms of trying to understand um, complaints or concerns related to financial institutions. And I think it's really important to have agencies in place and to have issues in place um, that help our, our constituents, um, a go-to place uh, for our constituents. And so uh, I'm proud of the work that I've done around consumer protection. I'm also really proud of, of the fact that um, since I've been in the legislature, we established the very first select committee on the nonprofit sector. Um, I have worked really closely with nonprofits in our state. They're the fourth largest employer um, as a sector in our state of California. And uh, we've been able to work together to pass legislation together, including the establishment of grants.ca.gov, uh, which is a new tool for nonprofits. So I think in addition to some of the uh, the, the, the legislation um, and the values that we have for our district. I think um, you can also see that uh, as a legislator, I've been able to work with the nonprofit sector, but also around consumer protections um, to help our constituents and really the state as a, as a whole. Uh, and you brought it up uh, earlier. Uh, how do you think your experience in education uh, before coming into this role uh, helps you looking at education, especially you know, added challenges with COVID and when to open schools, things like that. But just in general, the scope of education locally, how do you think your experience helps you and how do you uh, assess uh, education in the district? Yeah, so I, I've served, um, you know, I served on a school board for six years. I served in higher ed um, as a professional there for 14 years. And I think certainly that that experience um, influences how I think of education. Um, education, you know, we, we have systems of education in California um, and they are very big, but I also feel that uh, while they're big and sometimes change is much slower, um, understanding the impact of uh, some of these, you know, laws or regulations or even just conditions, it's not always a law or regulation. Um, I think as we're watching how COVID has impacted. Um, I know what it means uh, to be in a classroom. I know, I understand what it means to be in higher ed and what the value is of the classroom experience, um, but also how important it is uh, for the health and safety of our students that we take um, the right and appropriate uh, steps to ensure that everyone's healthy in our, in our education community, in our schools, in our, in, you know, in our institutions. Uh, I, I definitely think it's, it's very key. I think at the core, of my education experience, what I bring with me to the legislature is um, absolutely the, the, the knowing what it's like to work with students and families in the district. And not a dozen, not two dozen, 
Um, but really, you know, over the 14 years, um, thousands of families in our district, knowing what the real life implication is of, of some of these issues um, and, and you know, remembering the stories. I'm so, uh, you know, I feel, I, I get like excited when I still hear from some of the students that I work with who have now, um, you know, earned their PhD, who remember me from when they were in junior high going into their classroom or high school when I gave a financial aid workshop. Um, I think that it's those moments where I realize that it's those students, the families that I worked with, um, that really influence why I do the work that I do um, and why I try uh, to ensure that uh, at, the at the state level, there's a representative that understands um, you know, all of the, 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 the diversity, the challenges um, that our community uh, goes through, um, but the different thoughts and experience that we bring with them. Again, this isn't about saying you're going to make every single person um, in the district happy. You just simply can't. Every bill that we vote for has a trade-off, um, and I think it's understanding that. Um, but also knowing that um, we are doing our best given the conditions um, that, you know, th that we have in front of us for our district, I think is really, you know, important. Um, and so it's, it is those students, the families that I've worked with over 14 years, the thousands of students and families um, that, that I think about um, a lot um, when, I, when I'm writing the legisl you know, legislation or when I'm voting on something, um, because it turns out that they have family, that they have family who are business owners, small business owners. They have um, family who are working uh, in our communities, who are doing all kinds of different jobs. Um, you know, that's I think what what, what comes to mind for me, and um, where I get both excited um, and I'm happy that I've had that experience to be able to draw upon them. Uh, we we've covered a lot. Um... But I want to kind of open the floor to you. Just is there anything else uh, that we haven't mentioned that you'd like to mention, or uh, you know, any message uh, additionally that uh, you know you want voters to take away? Um, let's see. I, you know, I just at the end, I want voters. Uh, you know, I hope to earn the the support of voters in our district, and um, I hope that. Uh, not just my experience and qualifications, but also uh, my ability to represent this district, to have a connection with this district, um, is something that voters uh, will consider as they get ready to uh, vote uh, for this particular election. It's absolutely important uh, that we vote. And I think that um, no matter who folks are, uh, you know, and where they end up in terms of the election, I think it's uh, important to recognize that uh, a lot of the work that I've done, like I said, has been done um, in, in a way that's uh, bipartisan, in a way where we really do talk about the values and idea that best represent the Central Coast, and I'm proud of that work. Well said, and uh, before I let you go, I uh, um, uh, wanna be able to, to just ask your, your thoughts uh, on your opponent. Uh, you, may, uh, you haven't talked to him yet, but uh, uh, what are your thoughts on, on uh, Mr. Gary Michaels? And uh, you know, just as a, you know, running against him, uh, you know, any thoughts that you have seeing uh, his campaign or uh, you know what he's done in the community. Absolutely. Um, I have had the chance to meet uh, my opponent, um, both in person and virtually. We've participated in forums. And I think you have um, you know, two contrasts um, in terms of what folks are, are going to be voting for. Um, someone who comes in uh, with some understanding of how the legislative process works, with um, a history of being able to accomplish um, some, you know, and get some outcomes for our district. Um, and certainly who also understands um, the difficulties of uh, being in a role where you represent as many individuals um, that you do and having to, to make hard and tough decisions um, about our district. So I think that there is a contrast in terms of uh, the values uh, that we bring, um, the values that, we're, that are important to us. Um, but I do want to emphasize that in the end of the day, um, that th those, those differences, I, I think, um, are, you know, should be further examined in the sense that um, a lot of what could be said um, or will be said in terms of the rhetoric about um, either party um, should be examined in a way where people actually look at um, the record of the, the laws that have gotten signed um, by our governor and the support that's been there in a bipartisan way.